All right, here we go. Let's do this. Big Lundy, I have brought you in. Hello. Hello, Big Lundy. Sorry, I was uh, muted a bit. Yeah, I was just kind of to you. Hold on, let me mute your stream here a bit. There we go. Yeah, go for it. Uh, let me just get you set up here. So, Big Lundy. And what are your pronouns, Big Lundy? He, him's fine. Okay. All right. Perfect. Let me just uh, let me just make some small modifications to this. All right. And let's do the color. We're gonna do something like this. Okay. Dang, you got a lot of stuff that you do for the guests. This is incredibly oh, I accommodating. To. Oh, I, I try to do my best. Uh, I always want people to... Uh, there we go. That looks nice. Let's do that. There we go. Oh, shit. Yeah, I also blew up... I accidentally blew up my uh, my streaming setup this morning, uh, so some of these things would be much smoother. But uh, anyway, uh, welcome. Welcome to the show. Um uh yeah thanks for coming on I, I i hear you had some critiques or something of me um i'd love to yeah, I'd be totally um, open hearing them to be entirely clear uh mm. for most of them it's less about the substance of what you said and more about the performance itself okay uh, sure. which may seem a little uh i don't know petty i guess in in one sense but i i'm, I'm a firm believer that uh when it comes to online debate and panel discussions and things along those lines, the performance is just as, if not even more important than the facts that you're saying. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, rhetoric is really super important. It's uh, yeah, yeah. something I, I spend a lot of time thinking about. Yeah. So I do have a few notes here. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to go over is that um, uh, when you and basically everybody else were mm -hmm. addressing anything that CounterPoints was saying. Sure. Um, there was a lot of, I see what you're saying, but you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And you just, and, and I think that while the points that were being made were valid, um, I think that there wasn't a whole lot of consideration that was given to individually addressing his points. There was a lot of um, encapsulating what he was saying in like one massive point and then trying to address that mm -hmm. as opposed to the individual uh, things. For, as a for instance, uh, when he was mentioning that, you know, for better or for worse, there are Republicans that exist that are not voting for trump because they're necessarily racist though mm -hmm. obviously they fucking accept racism as a byproduct of what it is that they want sure. but that they have what they believe at the very least to be legitimate grievances and yeah. he listed a decent amount of the grievances out um now a lot of that wasn't totally addressed there was the idea of they have this fear of uh the fiat currency going to zero as a result of us printing too much money blah 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 mm -hmm. and then this was um uh, sort of responded to by i think both yourself as well as Va vosh that well i don't believe that it's people who are like poor that are voting for trump but i don't think that was the point that he was making well um, i mean one of the things i find really hard to to engage with with counterpoints is uh that he uh i, I don't want to say gish gallops because it's not like classic but i mean it's like uh it's like the thing is like he will dump out a million different points of varying levels of of uh of of, of like like uh proximity to the actual point at hand and uh there's only so much room on a panel for those to be engaged with if i had a one one-on-one -on -one conversation with counterpoints i imagine we could probably go by them one by one by one um mm. but the fact of the matter is that he throws out a lot of stuff and uh some of those just cannot like there's no time to address them in the panel and uh i felt like that was the case for almost the entire panel counterpoints by by far of all of the people on the panel was willing to throw out the most hooks for different things to talk about with the least substance to each of them and uh so uh yeah yeah i i maybe i didn't choose the exact right one to hook on to um but i just i feel that the idea that like that like uh lefties or liberals are to blame for republicans the the, the sordid state of affairs <laughs> yeah. in the republican party is just absurd which was what he was piggybacking off of the claims that were being made by Aris, um which i right. really disagreed with like strongly well, i think i hate that i i absolutely hate that worldview because at part, part some of it's a little bit of a personal axe to grind because i've spent mm -hmm. the last year on twitch politics um carefully laying out the case for why we should be concerned about donald trump's behaviors why it's likely that his behaviors 
things are going to get worse, why the Republican Party is representative of a fascist party. And every single time, no matter how careful you are, you just go, oh, there's a Nazi around every single corner. It's like, no, you know what? Like, I can't even bring up these real things because you people just don't give a shit about Nazis being in your party. That's what it always ends up being. To, to, to throw you a little bit of an olive yeah. branch, I'm of the opinion that while, I, while it is not true that Trump shares absolutely every single characteristic of a fascist he's so goddamn close that it's not in any way harmful to call him one yeah i mean <laughs> At least as thing, far as i'm concerned and, and as far and like i mean he's probably like i don't think that like i don't think intentionality has anything to do with it either um but even if that were the case um like he his party backs him up on all of those things and they like his party is more rabid than he is on most of those points like mm -hmm. the trump they, base are it's absurd. the lowest common denominator thing right yeah Where in like the fact that he is is the sort of like head of the face so to speak yeah. uh then everybody has to go to whatever it is that he says regardless of how stupid it is because the republican party is mostly just about like winning as opposed to actually changing anything or helping anybody or doing anything substantively good yeah yeah. Um, now, so I'm getting a little bit off topic. Okay. I think the main thing that I was trying to say with that particular point is that uh, counterpoints in 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 comparison to lecture fam, um, counterpoints is relatively a much more uh, I would say honest actor, so to speak. Uh, he gets very angry Sometimes, really yeah. quickly, but I think that a lot of that comes from a bit of a frustration that comes from a variety of things, mostly. Sure one of those being that he is on the right and he is always paired off with people who are absolute fucking morons. I mean, like that should, should but this is the thing, right? That's the entire point of my argument against him was that like, like, dude, you call yourself on the right. You stand alongside some of the stupidest and most repugnant people, all of them, like whether it's lecture fan or it's redneck or one of the other fucking like civil war advocating yokels that get dredged up because there's no, but not, no one on the right can even stay on Twitch. They can't even obey the basic rules on Twitch. But even worse than that, the ones who can obey the rules of Twitch have no respect for any of the people who actually put panels together. They show up late. They are assholes to the mods. They fight in the fucking prep chats. They're incapable of getting along with anybody for more than 10 seconds. And the moment they go on a panel, they do things that, that like, they'll drop slurs in the middle of a panel, like on Dylan's panel, where he's like, hey, like, please don't do these words. This this is a rule that everybody has to agree with to even go on the panel and they'll do it anyway and that can get mm -hmm. dylan demonetized so their belligerence their inability they're just like categorical like i don't even know i don't know if it's the right word to say it's like sociopathic or just totally unempathetic they do this all the time over and over and over again and it's just like okay, how, i can see yeah. it I, like I, I, I don't I don't think that the panel the people running the panels are definitely people who are intentionally trying to find the dumbest possible people no they can no right, and not even not. close like in fact like again I can vouch I can vouch I was on I believe the the second or f maybe even the first episode of Hippy Dippy ever I've been on most of the panels from their beginning I know I've been very very well in tune with the organizational process of these panels um and like i can tell you the right wingers they cannot even they can't it's like it's like trying to herd fucking like cats it's impossible they can't mm. even they, they just they hate other people they're to be, to, to so be entirely fair i have i have i have attempted to organize streamers in the past including people like trihex and yeah oh boy <laughs> i mean streamers yeah streamers, streamers in general streamers are, are bad but i mean we're talking a to totally different level we're talking a totally different level yeah. here i mean i can tell you i've i've been i i'm a pretty spicy bitch everybody knows that i'm demon mama used to joke about being the demon of t twitch politics because i would get super super spicy um i have been on these panels no problem for a real long time and i have seen name after name after name get banned off the panels for directly calling someone a slur for screaming over the panel mod when the mod is just trying to regain some level of uh of sanity i've seen them get thrown off because they refuse to stop harassing people in in uh in organizational chats it never stops I've seen mm. them get kicked off because they I, advocated for killing children on stream. Like, this is so ridiculous. I don't, I don't want to get too terribly into this because yeah. this is more of a criticism that I would have for the people who run the uh, the, the panels, that if yeah. they're going to have someone like CounterPoints on, 
he would probably honestly do better on his own than having somebody in his corner. Maybe, that but is then then like he that. needs to like uh, at the end of the day again. It's like, dude, you got to look at your own side. If you call yourself a righty, if you're gonna align yourself, right, with but righties, that's tangential you know to you're... what I'm saying. I'm well, not I'm not trying to say that he's correct for being on the right. Well, or yeah, that but he, how how are how are the pa- how are the panel mods supposed to if they literally if there's nobody if there's literally no talent that actually will show up to a debate and for the right except for one dumb yokel and to be, counterpoints to be, to be totally fair go back far enough as far as like youtube and twitch politics in general is mm-hmm. concerned and you really didn't have anybody on the left either for a while well that's this true is a fair, this is a relatively new phenomenon that we have people who are actually capable of debating well i mean i don't think it's a matter of people being capable of debating it's just that like they're the uh America is ridiculously far right in a lot of ways. And uh, like the left is becoming active in America politically, but I mean, the airwaves, I've talked about this on my show a million times. The the airwaves have been dominated by the right wing. The most popular radio show in the world is Rush Limbaugh. I grew up listening to Rush Limbaugh when I was younger in a very, very extremist right wing leaning family. Almost everyone, almost everyone who had political parents at all listened to Rush Limbaugh because that was the only thing on the radio and they made sure of it. They made sure that was the only case um and mm. it, it is it is the case i mean like literally the amount of power that um rush limbaugh has had in in the actual like mechanics of how radio shows get made who he vouches for and gets a show who he says yeah hey let me get this person on the air and i'll do this thing and and, and the advertising deals and that this sort of stuff behind that that happens um in the in the rigmarole of of the industry is it, it rules radio and so streaming just started the streaming industry is so young so yeah of course the right wingers are going to have an advantage some of them were literally spun up like by the Koch brothers like obviously. well i'm saying that i'm saying that when it comes to streaming the right wingers actually don't have much of advantage because streaming well I mean, well they're all gone <laughs> in, com- the, the in comparison to the astro in, in comparison to the astro turf youtube channels i mean uh when it comes to mm-hmm. actual like streaming like on twitch and things like that yeah. well that's um, because stream- twitch has standards yeah, Twitch. Well, it's not just the Twitch of standards. Um, it's because, all right. I I feel like we're going like incredibly off topic. Maybe, maybe. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't want to take up too much of your time uh, with this. So I don't. Anyway, I don't want to. Let's let's wrap it back in. Go um, for it. <clears throat> so the second note that I had uh, was uh, when you responded to the direct call out um, by I can't remember her name at the moment. Eris. Um, yeah, Eris. Yeah. Um, now, I completely and totally understand the passion that you had in your response. That's mm. perfectly reasonable mm. uh, and valid. Um, however, you did go on for quite a bit on that. Yeah. And by the end of it, it started to feel kind of preachy, yeah. um, which works well for lefties and people who are already kind of on your side for, for the most part. And for your audience, I'm sure they absolutely adore that sort of thing. Um, but so I feel like when you're on a de- I feel like when you're on a debate panel, mm-hmm. um, there is sort of a, a, a bit of a responsibility you have to remain more, I don't know, like tonally neutral uh, to a degree. Mm, nah. Um, no, I no. don't know. Okay. <laughs> Just no. No, I don't agree with you. Um, the the attempt, uh, the, the cowardly inability of the left in America to ever say anything passionately and with substance is part of the reason why we've lost um, for mm-hmm. so long. Uh, the, the left is is uh, the left in America has been characterized by hyper-civil Democrats for decades. Democrats who will take basically any abuse and then continue to reach across the aisle. It's like literally the mentality of the of the entire American left, which is not even left. It's like center left at best. And uh, I think the success of um, I think the success of people like myself, Vosh, other lefties who are willing to make that step and say, no, you know what? civility fucking aside i'm not gonna play nice you all know what i'm talking about listen and i'm not asking to play nice i think i don't know we might be might be talking past each other a little bit um but uh what i was more referencing um well for one i think the idea that the left has not had this ability to uh stand up for what they believe in and be passionate and, and make that no clear i think I, I can't really agree with that mostly because of the fact that the left in general um even even if it does get paired in with the democrats from from time to time when mm-hmm. it comes to the right uh the left is generally characterized as people who are nothing but passion nothing but emotion nothing but uh like yeah, by, by who like, though 
uh, mostly by people who are on the right. Yeah. Um, but and, that and does is that, appeal. Is that fact? Is that an actual it does, fact? It, or it, 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 whether or not it's fact does not matter when it comes to optics. Um, mm, uh, because when people aren't aware, because there's a lot of people who are just entirely just not online near as much as you or I are. Sure. Um, and if they're not really like aware, if they don't really like interact with leftists in general or anything like that, and that's the prevailing narrative, mm -hmm. then seeing a leftist, somebody who is perfectly happy describing themselves as one, be somewhat preachy in mm -hmm. like a response to somebody can make them go, I guess that is the way that they are. Yeah. Maybe um, I'm not talking to that person though. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm talking to intent, maybe I'm talking to the droves of 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 like like uh, let's let me let me give a couple examples of people I am talking about people who've had their heads fucking bashed in by the police, uh, the trans people who've had to keep their mouths shut about their trans status, gay people who've had to keep their mouths shut about trans about their gay status because the entire fucking internet will beat the shit out of them and make fun of them and treat them like shit all the time. Um, yeah, I don't I'm not here for like coddling um, the emotions of like. Uh, uh, of like uh s fence sitting centrists um like i, I really am not mm. uh, like i'm more than willing to discuss with them but i'm not going to compromise uh there are other people to do that there are other people who can do that that's not my role my role is to get people fucking thinking my goal is to get people to realize fucking terrifying shit that they don't want to think about um and to do so in a convincing and passionate manner now maybe sometimes i don't like nail the speech perfectly or whatever um or i maybe i flub up or something along those lines but i just don't i just don't agree with the idea that like um that like like on panels i have to like uh cater to this imagined like uh frightened centrist um because i don't think that that's most people i think that there are i think most people are uh suffering and are not happy with the state of things in America, and they need someone to uh, like talk to speak to that in a in a constructive manner and not a destructive manner, because the right I agree, speaks to I that in a destructive manner. Yeah, I agree with that. But there's particular ways there's particular ways of going about it. Mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders' speeches, for instance, were incredibly effective because he was speaking to an audience as opposed to responding to somebody in say like a debate. Um, now, there were times in which he was in political debates in which he would say something like, you're funded by billionaires, and that would get some claps. Um, and that works for, like, little pithy things. But yeah, in but they general, tone, he yeah, still maintains My chat is right, though. They, they tone the police the shit out of Bernie. And also, when Bernie, no, no, you're, you're when right. Bernie had the you're opportunity right. to go hard but on Biden, he right. didn't. He played nice. And that was, a, in my What's, opinion, that was a big mistake. You're, you're, you're right that they did tone, tone police Bernie. Mm. But regardless of their tone policing, well, mm -hmm. whoever was doing the tone policing, the right, the, the neolibs, Everybody. whoever, mm -hmm. um, the, the fact of the matter remains when he would make a speech, mm -hmm. just a regular speech to just people, his supporters or just on TV, yeah. that played really well because he was very impassioned with what he was saying. Mm -hmm. um, now, in the instance of you responding to the call out, um, the God, I can't remember her name, even though we just said it. Um, in, in response to her, <laughs> yeah, Eris. Uh, yeah. Eris. Okay, Eris. God damn it. I'm typing it down totally before good. I totally. do that again. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So, <laughs> in response to her, because for the most part, uh, up until that point, her presence on the panel was more or less uh, fairly pleasant, neutral. Mm -hmm. um, in the second topic, she didn't really have much to say, so she just kind of stayed out of it. Sure. Um, and then the one moment that she has a, a hot take that goes against you, mm. um, you respond in kind, I'm not saying that it's invalid for you to be like annoyed with mm. uh, her doing so, especially with the things that she was saying, but she had a bit of a, like a, a person coming in from the outside of this whole thing yeah. uh, that, want, that has their opinion mm -hmm. about what they see and what they think yeah. is true yep. and to be responded back to in, in fairly harsh terms. Mm -hmm. I think it's fair to say that you were fairly harsh to her mm -hmm. in that particular instance. Sure. Um, I don't think I was that harsh, but I, I did come down on this, this unbelievable myth that has been weaponized by the right. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. For sure. But you did it towards her. Yeah. And I think that that might've been, I don't know. I, I, that could, that could potentially be a little bit of a turnoff that I don't think you, eh. you would intend for. Yeah. Maybe. Might also be a turn <laughs> on.
A lot of people like being yelled uh, I mean, at, you know? Well, well, yeah, there are a lot of people who like getting yelled at, and I yeah. am one, indeed one of them. So, you know, I understand that particular thing. Yeah, I, 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 I just think the thing is, like, <laughs> there's a million, there's, like, like people who won't, uh, who won't go hard on, like, bullshit narratives are a dime a dozen. There's a million people online if you want to watch somebody who's not going to, like, who's just going to let everything fly by and just go, hmm, I wonder why you think that. Um, but no, when somebody, when somebody uses, like, a talking point of the far right that has been wildly successful online, because um specifically because it plays to the pre-existing biases of a bunch of um uh, let's put it this way very misguided um largely young white cis men straight cis white men um like i'm not going to let that fly i don't believe in that and i think that people need to feel a little uncomfortable about that that people need to realize that this is a narrative that is um, that is totally wrong. That is that is designed to appeal to uh, to and, and coddle the worst biases in the population, and it should be slammed down on because it is laughable on its face. The idea that you could blame like people who act like in the face of Donald Trump's last four years and the absurd insanity that the American like that American politics has become as a result of the increasingly fascistic and and uh, rabid uh, Republican Party that there should be some amount of blame put on like liberals is like not even liberals but on like leftists even broader is just silly again it is it is uh, it's slightly using slightly more words to say uh, I used to be a leftist and I used to believe in human rights, but then someone on Twitter called me dumb. And so I stopped believing in human rights. Uh, I and, don't think that was her point. No, but that is um, ultimately what the argument is. If you take that further, that will be weaponized by right wingers. I'm not kidding you. This happens all the time. Go, no, I, go, I, I, go, I understand. Go look at how many millions and millions of views, videos of right wingers being like, as you can see, the intolerant left is incapable. These SJWs, and if these it was being, and If it was yeah. a point that was being used by someone like, say, Tree of Logic, I'm not sure if you're Well, yeah, but it's granting. I know who Tree of Logic is. But also, though, listen, I don't know anything about Eris, whatever, but you're gra it's granting legitimacy to an argument that's wrong on its face. It's just completely wrong. Not necessarily. And I'm, yeah. I'm not saying don't. I'm yeah. not saying don't debunk it. And I'm not saying don't respond to it. And you can have like a level of passion, but uh -huh. um, I don't know. I think there's a way to phrase what you want to say that doesn't make it look like you're attacking somebody who, yeah. up until that point, had been a fairly like neutral person. That's and a, there's it's a secondary a debate panel. There, I'm spicy. Everybody knows that. There's it's, a secondary yeah. effect though. Sure. There's a secondary knock-on effect uh -huh. when you are aggressive towards somebody. Uh -huh. Um, whether your audience might know it or not, mm -hmm. it sort of paints that person as somebody who is being malicious actively. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that it's probably not unreasonable to say that in doing that sort of an attack, it leads to the idea of she is trying to, well, Eris specifically, yeah. is trying to say something that is very wrong uh, intentionally, and she's trying to trying to spread a, a bad talking point intentionally, yeah. uh, instead of the idea that maybe she's just a little bit ignorant and not as tuned in to the arguments as others might be. Maybe. Um, well, and I that, mean, that that's and, the risk. And, you know, that's the risk you take when you community. go on a when you go on a on a on a, a debate panel that's known for being spicy, uh, that is often de devolves into blood sports, and that also uh, and also you say something that's just patently ridiculous and wrong. Yeah, I don't have a problem with. I have no problem with with uh, coming down hard on that. But I, I can understand how it might not be to everyone's taste. Some people would prefer a, a lighter tone. Some people would prefer something more conciliatory. But um, I don't really right. believe in well, that. Yeah. That's that's yeah. that's a whole that's a whole ass debate that I don't think we have that much time for. So sure. I'll keep going with my uh, with my things. Um, this one is actually just a uh, a bit of a I don't know a tip. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not sure if you re you saw, but lecture fan was more or less quiet for most of the mm -hmm. panel. Uh, the topics we could introduce, unless he was directly addressed by somebody, he would basically shut the fuck up. Sure. And of course, r main reason for that being is that literally everybody on that panel, including counterpoints, thought he was a moron. Mm -hmm. um, and for good reason. He is. <laughs> I'm, not gonna say for, I'm not going to say for any sort of bad reason. Sure. Um, now. I think that if you want to get more content out of him, that um, kind of uh, making him think that you're a reasonable person to talk to. Impossible. Um, I, impossible. It's impossible. 
Yep, I think you can. The, no. I mean, he's really stupid. How hard it's is he to manipulate? It's completely impossible because here's the thing. Um, this is this is the thing. Oh, he's easy to manipulate in certain ways. Like, I mean, Dylan Burns has gotten some funny burns off. Like, that's what that's what I'm saying. I'm saying. I'm saying. But that's not the only way to go about it, it, though. Like, honestly, uh, like lecture fan is is a uh, again. This is this is one of the things that drives me nuts. There is a massive uh, what's it called uh like there's this affirmative action effect for righties where completely irrelevant um like uh right wing people because there's nobody else they just get they get shuffled on onto panels with people with infinitely more talent infinitely more um professionality and infinitely better ideas than them they get shuffled on because there has to be somebody from the right on there um lecture fan i've been on like i've i've seen him on a million panels i've been on a panel with lecture fan before the guy is just he he, he his views are repugnant all the way through and through. This guy literally spent... I can believe that. Yeah, he spent like four years just deep-throating Donald Trump's cock. With, with what little he even yeah. said in the panel, it's yeah. obvious that he And, and like, I just, I don't think... Uh, a lot of the people or... that are in these spaces are going to have some lore of that, and I think it's worth it for those people to continue thinking that people, him and people like him, are ridiculous clowns who nobody should take seriously at all, because they are. Hmm. I suppose that's, I suppose that is a, a valid uh, uh, strategy because uh, for me personally, I didn't know much about Lecture Fan prior yeah. to watching this particular uh, thing, so I that's didn't fine. know much about him other than what it, what little he did say. Um, yeah, he, so he literally I will, he will literally I, I, like like I, he'll read off of a script these like pre prepared things. Like again, this guy at the peak of the Trump thing, his viewership was like f he would get like four hundred and fifty average viewers at the peak of like the Trump train, spewing complete and utter nonsense like literal lies like again this is one of those situations where uh like i don't have sympathy for the con man i don't have sympathy will, for a guy who's say, yeah he did, a, he did a great job at fucking up his his optics entirely uh, like whatever optics he was going for by just leaving early yeah yeah oh he does he's done that many times he's rage I mean, quit. literally just just stomping off like a child yeah um, yeah he's rage quit panels before like yeah well, i guess i yeah. guess i'm i'm mostly saying this particular point as a uh, from the perspective of a viewer mm -hmm. i would have i would have loved to have seen more opportunities to tear into him a little bit more but if Maybe. you prefer that he just shut up and just stay in his own corner and not say much then that's uh, that's valid as well. i mean it's fine I, I think it's okay to like uh i think sometimes if somebody's gonna like i don't know give you the rope to hang them with sort of thing um like i think that's fine but there's also times where it's just like there's another effect of it which is that um when people like lecture fan who's like dullard opinions um like monopolize time on a panel it gets taken away from much more interesting and meaningful conversations so yeah would would it be easier to get more dunks off on him if we let him talk more yeah but we also wouldn't get to actually talk about anything of subs of substance because all he would be doing is going uh, yeah, uh, the commie leftists who cancel culture, buzzword, 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 buzzword for 15 minutes. And then one of us would go, all of that is everything that was just said is false. Here's how stupid you are. And then he would do it again in five minutes. Meanwhile, we can have another conversation, even with somebody like CounterPoints, where you can actually talk about issues. You can talk about like, hey, what actually happened in NYC? Why is it Why is it that like there's been multiple investigations in the, in, into the NYPD? but people are still getting their skulls cracked on the streets why the fuck is it that like eh, that like religion like religious groups like christian dominionists can hold high positions of office in our country like you would never get to that if you just let a uh, lecture fan uh, monopolize the conversation so personally i think it's better when he gets like his dumb little sentence and everybody makes fun of him and then he just goes back and like sucks his thumb in the corner like he usually does I suppose that's fair. Yeah. Um, regarding the uh, deep and substantive uh, conversations uh, that you could potentially be having, though, mm. uh, I have a I have a bit of recommended reading for you. I'm sure, not sure. Sure. Uh, it, it's a uh, book that was made back in 2005, but it's still fairly relevant to the conversation mm. today concerning like religion and geopolitics. Sure. So to speak. Uh, it's called Dying to Win by Robert Pape. It's Dying an extremely to win well written book. Pape. Um, there are some contentions that some statisticians have with his particular uh writings, mostly because um, Wait, sorry, what was the he, name of it again? Uh, Dying to Win, okay. Dying, to uh, win. it was it's, it's sort of an analysis of uh, of uh, uh, terror, terrorism and suicide bombers and things along those lines, and how the U.S. imperialism has kind of like exacerbated the situation as opposed to having actually uh -huh. fixed anything, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, it's it's a lot of like real deep statistical analyses that goes into a lot of the things that we could have done better. Some mm -hmm. things that we that he recommends that we did that we should have done that we ended up not doing because mm -hmm. 
of course we still had bush until about 2008 yeah, yeah. um and uh and of course the you know, libs are still imperialists they gotta do what they do true um but uh a lot of them are <laughs> he war Yep. He gave a lot of really good analyses and recommendations as far as like policy was concerned that, that would have done a lot of good in like preventing this sort of resurgence of terrorism in general. It mm -hmm. would have been a really good idea to take his uh, stuff into account. Um, but one of the one of his main takeaways was that uh, he pointed out that the only thing that would change mm -hmm. really in any substantive way, if we were to say, take Islam entirely out of the equation, is not, is it, it wouldn't change the fact that there are terrorists. It wouldn't change the fact that there are uh, authoritarian uh, countries that are run by dictators that are attempting to like uh, force everybody into a sort of conservative, uh, like a utopia of their mm. own making. Yeah. I wouldn't stop uh, a lot of the things that we're very uh, mad about, I guess, in the West. Uh, the only thing that it would probably curve is suicide bombings in itself. Yeah, um, and that's like the only thing that it would maybe do something. Yeah. Um, so he, this is, it's a really good book. It's very helpful to talking about like religion and geopolitics. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I tend to be of the belief that like, um, that like religion is a very powerful tool that is often used by um by very very influential and charismatic um or opportunistic leaders um yeah there are like cult there are like i mean again we, we can see yeah, that but, in the but, case but imagine of, if everybody started to realize that they didn't even need to go to religion they just had to have a person like trump for oh instance, yeah but i mean many people have i mean that's happened many times right i mean exactly. fucking stalin like, right yeah. The, and yeah. the more that that happens and the, the more like religion can go away but we're still going to have these cults surrounding like these cults of personality instead yeah. which is still going to be a major problem and it's something that like is going to cause problems for their neighbors and the like and yeah. how do you deal with that it's a very complicated yeah. situation absolutely um, well thank you for the book recommendation uh and thank you for coming on i'm gonna bring another person who wants to debate with me on I'll, now i make one more note okay, um sure. when you were talking with vadim uh mm -hmm. he i know this was a bit of a throwaway comment but he was talking about like modern skeptics and such uh -huh. um neil degrasse tyson uh -huh. <laughs> he's pretty unbased um, oh, i mean i don't know a whole lot about him i just know that you know he's done some good stuff uh i think he was in cosmos and that was pretty fun uh and he's had a couple of good takes but that's about all i know about him and i is good, lee reddit uh, epic bacon elon musk bull for bull one he is he is definitely a technocrat but it's basically that's sure. that, that's where the whole epic bacon elon musk stuff comes in which yeah. is incredibly problematic for a lot of reasons yeah. and also strangely enough he violently opposes studying philosophy in spite of the fact that he regularly employs poetic language and basically his description yeah. of anything so it's a very bizarre I don't, I don't understand him uh but uh, yeah <laughs> i just wanted to make that note anyway yeah, no problem uh, it's been a pleasure uh being here and discussing hey thanks now. for coming on and being willing to share your critiques and i appreciate mm -hmm. you being willing to do that thanks big lundy have a good night good night